Hi friends, so since the recording did not save from Friday, we are going to go ahead and read what we were supposed to read on Friday, what I already did read, but you didn't get to hear, from Goosebumps Phantom of the Auditorium. So here's your warning, this is a spooky book. If you do not like spooky, do not follow along. We will have a new book to read next month. All right, so in the last set of chapters that we read, um, the kiddos went down into the deep underground of the school because they got on the trap door and forgot that there's no way to get up except clicking the button that's on top of the stage. But they found a lever and they were discovered by the night janitor who they're convinced, or at least Brooke is, that it's the Phantom. And there's a new kid in school and he's sitting in Brooke's seat. So let's see what happens. Chapter 9. Excuse me, I said staring down at him. He blushed. I think this is where Miss Walker told me to sit. He glanced around nervously. I saw an empty spot at the table behind me. She probably meant over there, I said pointing. I've been in this seat all year, next to Zeke. I motioned to Zeke's chair. Zeke wasn't there. He was late, as usual. The boy blushed even darker. Sorry, he muttered shyly. I hate being the new kid. He started to gather his books together. This is your first day? I asked. I introduced myself. I'm Brian Colson, he replied, climbing to his feet. My family just moved to Wood Mills. From Indiana. I said I'd never been to Indiana. It was a boring thing to say, but it was true. You're Brooke Rogers, he asked, studying me. I heard you got the starring role in the play. How did you hear about that already? I demanded. Some kids are talking about it on the bus. You must be a good actress, huh? He added shyly. I guess. I don't know. Sometimes I get pretty bad stage fright, I told him. I don't know why I told him all that. Sometimes I just rattle on. I guess that's why my parents call me Babbling Brook. Brian smiled shyly and sighed. Back at my school in Indiana, I was in all the plays, he told me. But I never had the lead role. I wish I had moved here sooner. Then I could have tried out for the Phantom. I tried to picture Brian on stage in a play, but I couldn't. He didn't seem like the acting type to me. He seemed so shy, and he kept blushing all the time. But I decided to give the poor guy a break. Brian, why don't you come to rehearsal with me this afternoon, I suggested. Maybe you can get a small part or something. Brian smiled as if I'd just offered him a million dollars. You mean it, he asked wide-eyed. Sure, I replied. No big deal. Zeke came slinking into his seat, his eyes on Ms. Walker's desk. Am I late, he whispered. I shook my head. Then I started to introduce him to Brian, but Ms. Walker stepped into the room and closed the door. Time for class to begin. Brian hurried to his place at the other table. I started to sit down, but realized I left my science notebook in my locker. Be right back, I called to Ms. Walker. I hurried out the door and jogged around the corner to my locker. Hey! To my surprise, the locker do door stood half open. That's weird, I thought. I remembered locking it. I pulled the door open the rest of the way, started to reach inside for my notebook, and let out a startled gasp. Someone was in there, and he was staring right at me. Chapter 10 His ugly blue and green face grinned out at me. I gasped again and clamped my hand over my mouth. Then I cracked up laughing. Zeke and his dumb rubber creature mask. Well, you got me this time, Zeke, I murmured out loud. Then I saw the folded up sheet of paper dangling beneath the mask. Some kind of note? I pulled it out and unfolded it. Scribbled in red crayon was the message. Stay away from my home sweet home. Ha ha, I murmured. Very good, Zeke. Very amusing. I pulled out my science notebook, slammed the locker shut, and locked it. Then I hurried back to the classroom. Miss Walker stood behind her desk. She had just finished introducing Brian to everyone. Now she was reading the morning announcements. I slid into my seat beside Zeke. You didn't scare me one bit, I lied. He looked up from his math notebook. Zeke always did his math homework first thing in class. Huh? He flashed me his innocent look. Your mask, I whispered. It didn't scare me. Mask? What mask? He replied, tapping the pencil eraser against my arm. I shoved him away. 
Stop acting stupid, I said sharply. Your note wasn't funny either. You can do better than that. I didn't write you any note, Brooks, he replied impatiently. I don't know what you're talking about, really. For sure, I said, rolling my eyes. You don't know anything about the mask in my locker or the note, right? Shut up and let me finish my math, he said, staring down at his textbook. You're not making any sense. Oh well, I guess the real phantom did it then, I said. He ignored me. He was scribbling equations in his notebook. What a phony baloney, I thought. Zeke did it, he knows it. For sure. After school, I led Brian to the auditorium. I practically had to drag him on, up on the stage. He was so shy. Miss Walker, are there any parts still available, I asked. Brian is really interested in being in the play. Miss Walker glanced up from the script in her hands. I thought, saw that she had scribbled notes all over the script. She studied Brian. I'm really sorry, Brian, she said, shaking her head. You came to school a few days too late. Brian blushed. I've never seen anyone blush so much. There aren't any speaking parts left, Miss Walker told him. They've all been given out. Do you need a stand-in for anyone? Brian asked. I'm a very fast memorizer. I can memorize more than one part. Wow, I thought. He really is eager to be in the play. Well, we really don't need any more stand-ins, Miss Walker told him. But I have an idea. You can join the scenery crew if you wish. Great, Brian exclaimed with real enthusiasm. Go see Tina over there, Miss Walker told him, pointing to the group of kids meeting at the back wall of the stage. Tina was busily pointing out where she wanted the scenery to go, motioning dramatically with both hands, making everyone follow her all around the stage. Brian seemed really happy. I watched him trot over to find Tina. I took a seat in the auditorium and concentrated <clears throat> on my script. I was in practically every scene. How could I possibly memorize my whole part? I sighed and slouched back in the seat, slinging my feet over the seat in front of me. I was memorizing my third line in the play, which went, What proof do you have that this man might be dangerous? When all the lights suddenly went out. A total blackout. I couldn't see a thing. Kids started to shout, Hey, who turned out the lights? I can't see. What's happening? Turn them back on. I sat straight up when I heard the shrill scream. A terrifying scream, like an animal howl, that ripped through the darkness and exploded over the auditorium. No, no, I heard Corey Schuyler moan. And then I heard someone else cry out. It's coming from up on the catwalk. Another shrill wail rose over the frightened cries of my friends. Turn on the lights, I heard Corey plead. Please turn on the lights. Other frightened voices called out. Who is screaming? Somebody do something. There's someone up on the catwalk. The auditorium lights flickered back on. Another long howl from above the stage forced me to raise my eyes. And I saw him. A green and blue masked creature wearing a shiny black cape. Gripping a long, heavy rope, he came swinging down from high on the catwalk. As he swung down to the stage, he threw his head back and laughed, a horrifying, evil laugh. I jumped to my feet and stared in amazement. The Phantom. Chapter 11 The Phantom landed hard on his feet. His shoes hit the stage floor with a thud. He let go of the rope and it flew away from him. The green and blue face glanced quickly around the stage. Tina and her scenery crew stood frozen against the wall, staring at him in horrified silence. Ms. Walker appeared stunned. She had her arms tightly crossed over her chest. The Phantom's cape swirled around him as he stomped one shoe on the stage. He's short, I realized, standing and staring from down in the second row of seats. He's about Zeke's height, maybe an inch or two taller. Or maybe he's exactly Zeke's height, because he is Zeke. Zeke! Hey, Zeke! I called. The ugly masked face peered out to the auditorium. The phantom started to sink. His feet disappeared. The legs of his dark pants. Down, down. He had stepped on the peg and was riding the trapdoor down. Zeke, I yelled. I ran up the aisle and pulled myself up onto the stage. Zeke, you're not funny, I shouted. But the phantom had vanished below the stage. I ran up to the opening in the stage and stared down into the darkness. Ms. Walker stepped up beside me, an angry scowl on her face. Was that Zeke? She asked me. Was that really Zeke? I I'm not sure, I stammered. I think so. 
Zeke, Miss Walker called down to the opening. Zeke, are you down there? No reply. The phantom had lowered all the way down. I couldn't see anything but a deep well of blackness. Kids gathered around the opening, chattering excitedly, laughing and teasing each other. Was that Zeke? I heard Corey ask. Was Zeke wearing that dumb mask again? Is Zeke going to ruin our rehearsal today? Miss Walker demanded angrily. Does he think we need to be scared every afternoon? I shrugged. I couldn't answer. Maybe it wasn't Zeke, I heard Corey say. He sounded very frightened. It had to be Zeke. Zeke, are you here? Miss Walker shouted, cupping her hands around her mouth. She turned slowly, her eyes starting over the stage and then all the seats of the auditorium. Zeke Matthews, can you hear me? No answer. No sign of Zeke. He's your friend, Brooke, Tina said nastily. Don't you know where he is? Can't you tell him to stop ruining our play? I sputtered an answer. I was so angry, I didn't know what I was saying. I mean, Zeke is my friend, but I'm not responsible for him. Tina was just trying to make me look bad and score more points with Ms. Walker. Okay, scenery people, Ms. Walker instructed. Back to work. I'll take care of this. The rest of you, she stopped. We all heard it. The loud clanking sound. A loud hum rose over the clanking. The trap door, it's coming back up, I cried, pointing. Good, Miss Walker said, crossing her arms over her chest again. She narrowed her eyes at the opening in the stage floor. Now I will let Zeke know how we feel about his little joke. His last little joke, if I had anything to say about it. Uh-oh, I thought. Poor Zeke. Miss Walker was a really good teacher and a really nice person, too, until you got on her bad side. But once you did that, once you made her angry, once you had her crossing her arms and squinting her eyes at you, then you were in major trouble. Because she could be really mean. I knew that Zeke was just having some fun. He loved being the center of attention, and he loved to scare people. He especially loved to scare me. This was a game for him, I knew. He was trying to show everyone that they were scaredy cat wimps, and he wasn't. Zeke played this game all the time, but this time it had backfired. This time he had gone too far, and Miss Walker was waiting for him, arms crossed, eyes squinting. Will she toss him out of the play, I wondered, or will she just let him just yell at him until his ears curl? The hum grew louder, the stage floor vibrated. We all heard the platform stop, its usual five feet below the stage. Poor Zeke, I thought. He's standing there in innocently. He doesn't know what he's in for. Poor Zeke. I peered down into the opening and gasped. What do you think she saw in the opening? Find out tomorrow. Have a great day, friends.